Remember that psychologists predicted that only 1% of people recruited for Milgram's study would actually kill someone by electrocution just because a man in a white lab coat at Yale University told them to do it. The shock of the Milgram study. Ooh, bad play on words. Um, the very surprising result of the Milgram study is that two-thirds, two-thirds of us would kill someone because an experimenter in a white lab coat told us to do it. In fact, the average shock that was delivered was 360 volts, which is very high and in the deadly range as far as the subjects knew. 80% of the subjects continued to shock the learner even after the learner screamed that his heart was bothering him. Let me say that again. 80% of the subjects in this study who thought that they were electrocuting another human being just as part of an experiment on learning continued to shock the stranger that they just met even after he yelled that his heart was hurting him now. Our desire to obey orders is that strong that two thirds of us would continue. This graph shows the percentage of subjects who obeyed the experimenter up to a particular point on the voltage scale. So on the horizontal axis, you can see the voltage scale. On the far left is the smallest voltage and on the far right is the deadly voltage. And the fact that the blue line is dropping means that as the voltage increases, fewer people are continuing, fewer people are obeying. But 62.5%, that's a percentage of subjects in this experiment who went all the way to the end and as far as they knew, electrocuted someone because the experimenter told them to. Now, Milgram spent years replicating this study because honestly, the experts in psychology didn't believe him. So he conducted a replica simple replications, do the exact same thing again, but he also changed the experiment in subtle ways. So he changed, for example, how closely is the experimenter um, standing to you as you're delivering the shocks? Is he in another room or is he right next to you? Turns out when the experimenter was in another room, what people would try to do is sort of cheat and instead of increasing the voltage, maybe just stay at a lower voltage while, you know, following the order to shock the person. Uh, in one permutation of the study that I find just unbelievable, the fake subject you see here on the right in the white shirt yelling is literally in arm's reach of the real subject. And in order to shock the subject, it's not press a button on a board, it's you take the fake subject's hand and you put it directly onto an electric shock plate and deliver the shock that way. Um, the rate of compliance dropped, but it didn't drop to zero, far from it. Milgram also varied where the study took place. So a lot of people wondered, hey, did you get 62% compliance simply because this, the study took place at Yale University, which is a very prestigious university. It looks like something out of a Harry Potter film. It's, it's just crazy impressive. So when he did it at Yale, he got 62% compliance. But when he replicated the study at basically a little shop in a strip mall, so really lowered the prestige level, he still got 45% compliance all the way to the end, to death. Um, when the subject had to hold the, the fellow's hand onto the shock plate, only 30% of subjects complied to the end. But my God, you're taking the hand of someone who is passed out and has just screamed in pain and you're placing it on a sh it's just mind-boggling. Um, if the teacher, the real subject, is allowed to decide how much to shock the learner, the fake subject, then only 3% of the population kills him. Oof. 
Uh, after subjects completed the study, they were asked by the experimenter why they complied to the orders. And the reasons included the following. First of all, they didn't want to disappoint the experimenter, the guy in the white, white lab coat. So they killed another person because they didn't want to disappoint the experimenter. Um, the experimenter was, as you'll see in the, in the video when you watch it, uh, as, when my students watch it as part of the lab, the experimenter is a very pushy man. He says you absolutely must continue. The experiment requires that you continue. It is absolutely essential that you continue. That's a lot of pressure from a guy in a white lab coat. So that influenced people's decisions. The experiment was also very fast paced. There were no breaks. You couldn't go out and take a walk or have a cup of coffee. It was pressured and fast. That increased compliance. Um, it was very important that the study was designed so that um, the buy-in or the pain that you inflicted started out small. If the experiment was run so that the first thing you did was to electrocute the other person, you don't get the compliance here. So it's important that the, the compliance be for small steps that just keep getting bigger and bigger. And when subjects got to the point where they said, I'm not taking responsibility for this man's health, then the experimenter said, I take responsibility. So the subjects felt that they weren't responsible for the fellow's health. This is very mm, troubling language because it's exactly the sort of language that Nazis used during the trials after World War II. So after World War II, many of the Nazis who were still alive and who had killed millions of people were captured and taken to a court to be charged with murder. Uh, one of the worst uh, criminals, Nazi criminals during World War II was the guy pictured here, Eichmann. And when asked why he killed so many people, Eichmann's response was, I was just following orders. Essentially what the subjects in this experiment say. So in other words, it's okay for me to kill someone if I'm ordered to do so. Now in the United States, unlike just about every other developed country, we're one of the few developed countries that still has the death penalty. So in the United States, that means that there are people who kill other people for a living. Pretty hard to do. How do you do it? Well, they have to find ways to reduce the person's sense of responsibility in the death. So sometimes folks who kill other people um, wear masks or hoods to hide their identity, to de-individualize them. Or in the traditional firing squad, um, the people, there are multiple shooters, not one shooter, multiple shooters. And some, the shooters believe that only one or a small number of them has a bullet in their gun. So many of them are able to continue to participate in firing squads because they can always say to themselves, I don't think there was a bullet in my gun. Okay, so what can we conclude about the Milgram study? Well, the point of the Milgram study was to understand what happened in World War II. Do, did regular German people kill Jewish folks and declared enemies of the Nazi state because they were German or because they were told to do so? And the answer is pretty clear from the Milgram study. It has nothing to do with being German. We all obey. We all have this default to obey. And two thirds of us will obey the order to kill another person just because someone told us to do so. Unfortunately, his history has plenty of episodes of violence that come from exactly this sort of a setup. In 1968, when the U.S. was in Vietnam, um, a troop of American soldiers went to a little village called Mele and massacred about 400 
old men, women, and children, because why? They had been given the order sort of to do so. Uh, there's also an incredible mass suicide, it was also a homicide though, called the Jonestown Massacre that we'll talk about later. But basically the Jonestown Massacre involved a religious man named Jim Jones telling the people in his church to kill their children and to kill themselves. Now, not everyone did. Um, many people were murdered by Jim Jones's guards, um, but hundreds of people killed their children and killed themselves because Jim Jones told them to. Social psychology, it's got some really tough studies in there, guys, and this one is one of them. So two thirds of us will kill another person because a guy in a white lab coat tells us to. Everybody thinks they're not part of the two thirds, but think about it. 